we're going to talk about the dividing point method. The dividing point method is a method to solve inequalities where you can solve even the most complex of inequalities without running into any problems. Sometimes students learn a dead end method which is only for solving very simple inequalities and then unfortunately they have to relearn how to solve inequalities again when you get anything complicated such as inequalities that have multiple dividing points or squares in them or variables in denominators or if you ever have to multiply or divide by a variable or absolute value you get all sorts of different ways you have to learn it if you don't follow the dividing point method one real benefit is that dividing point method will always work and another great benefit is that we are actually learning math instead of simply doing tricks to do our math so let's go ahead and actually learn how to do the math now this video assumes you know how to do basic algebra and you can always do the dividing point method if you know how to do the algebra for that type of problem. So let's get started. If we have an inequality such as 3x plus 5 is greater than 7, we can easily solve that inequality by following the dividing point method. And the first thing we're going to do is make it an equation. So to make it an equation, we just replace the inequality with an equal sign. And then we solve this. And again, you should be able to solve this without any problem at this point if you're watching this video. And so I will quickly solve it here. And we get x equals 2 thirds as our critical point or our dividing point. So we put a number line down and we put our critical or dividing point down right in the middle. Now this is an open circle because it excludes the dividing point. We know it excludes it because we can see from the original inequality that it does not have an equal sign, so it excludes our solution. So we're going to put an open circle above the two-thirds. Now I need to pick a number that is smaller than, or I'm sorry, less than two-thirds and a number that is greater than two-thirds. So an easy number is zero. In this case, zero is less than our two-thirds. And then we want to pick a number that is greater than two-thirds. Now, easy number in this case is one, but you could pick 10,000 if you wanted. Any number that is greater than the two-thirds would work. Now those two points are called test points and the reason they're called test points is we're going to use them to test whether it is true or false on that side. So let's start with zero. If I put zero into the original inequality, now keep in mind we're going into the original inequality. So we're looking right here at that green box, we want to look at the original inequality and we're plugging in the test point zero. So three times zero plus five. Well, that equals five. And we ask ourselves, is it true or false that five is greater than seven? Well, that is clearly false. Now we check our other test point. And we're pretty certain it's going to be true because we are doing pretty simple problems, but we should check it just to be sure. We're going to have the number 1. We replace x with 1 in our original inequality. We do 3 times 1 is 3, plus 5, which is 8. And is it true or false that 8 is greater than 7? That is true. And then we put our arrow above the true side. That's a key point. The arrow goes above the true side. We write down our variable name underneath, x. We copy our arrowhead. We check to see if it's inclusive or exclusive. 
In this case, it's excluding it, so we don't need the equals. And then we write our dividing point. And we now have the solution and the, that's the solution, and the graph. And this is our graph. Kind of missed the top part there, but you can see what part is the graph. Now at this point, some people say, oh wait, I know an easier way to do this. We can just copy the comparison symbol, the greater than, from the original problem and write it on the answer. Well, that only works about 50% of the time. So if you're okay with being wrong half the time, then you could do it that way, but it's really not the way to do it because you'll see that about half the time it actually does flip. So let's take a look at another problem. How about four minus two x is less than or equal to seven. So now we turn this into an equals and have an equation and now we subtract 4 from both sides. Again, this should be easy for you to do. And now I divide both sides. Oh, that's a positive 3, not a negative 3. I divide both sides by negative 2. And I get x equals negative 3 halves. I put that on my number line. And that is a closed circle because our original inequality includes the equal sign. And then I pick two test points. Zero in this case is to the right of three, negative three halves. And I'm going to pick negative 100 just because I don't want to have to really think about that. And now I'm going to test those points. Four minus two times negative 100. Well, negative 2 times negative 100 is a really big positive number. 4 minus 2 times negative 100 comes out to be a really big positive number. Because if I take n negative 2 times negative 100, I get positive 200. Add that to the 4, I get 204. But that could have been 1,000 or 10,000. Whatever that negative number will give us a really big positive number on the left side of the inequality. And is it true that a really big positive number is less than or equal to 7? No, that's false. And if you want, you could actually do the arithmetic there. If I wanted to, I could have said negative you know, 5 or something and done the arithmetic. And now let's test 0. 4 minus 2 times 0. Well, 2 times 0 is 0, 4 minus 0 is 4, and is it true or false that 4 is less than or equal to 7? Well, that's true. So our arrow goes over the true part, and we write x, we write our arrowhead, and this time it's inclusive, so we put an equal sign, and then our dividing point. And if you notice, this time, the symbol switched from before. So we're actually doing the math. We're testing the points. We're not following some silly tricks. Let's look at another example. So we set this equal. three to both sides, x over five equals 10, multiply both sides by five. And the really cool thing is we don't really care that 50 is such a huge number because we're not really doing much arithmetic anymore. We're doing algebra. So we have our number line, we have 50. This gets a closed circle. Here's my zero. 
a number bigger than 50? Well, I'd like to pick a number that's a multiple of 5 because I see over here that I'm going to have to divide it by 5. What if I picked something like 500? I know that's a huge number, but that way we don't have to think a whole lot. So let's test out 0 first. 0 divided by 5 is 0, minus 3 is negative 3, and that is false. And then negative, uh, let's see, 500 divided by 5 is a really big positive number, minus 3, still going to be a really big positive number. Is that greater than or equal to 7? Yes, that is true. So our arrowhead goes to the right. We write x is greater than or equal to because it's inclusive, and then our dividing point. And that's our answer. That's got our solution and our graph. Let's look at one more. Let's see. How about x over 3 um, minus 5 is uh, less than or, I don't know, let's just leave it less than. How about 7? I'm just making these up as I go. The neat thing is that you can solve any of these. I don't have to think about it too hard to make them easy to solve or make them solvable because these actually are all about the same difficulty. So I go ahead and add 5 to both sides. This should be feeling pretty normal and pretty comfortable by now. x over 3 equals 12. And then multiply both sides by 3. I get x equals 36. I put this up like this. 36. This is an open circle because it's not included. 0 here. I want a multiple of 3. How about, oh, let's see, what 60 is a multiple of 3? And then I put in 0. Negative 5 is less than 7. That's true. I put in 60. That gives us 60 divided by 3 is 20. 20 minus 5 is 15. Is 15 less than 7? No, that's false. So I know that the arrowhead goes over the true part. And then we write x, copy our arrowhead. It's exclusive because it's not filled in. And then our dividing point. And that gives us, once again, our solution and our graph. And that's it for dividing point method.